Thanks so much for joining us. to order Country Legends Live on two videos for $29.99. Use your credit card and we'll send you a third video free, plus free shipping for the first 500 callers. Call now. Order online at timelife.com. as an adverse reaction to an otherwise harmless substance. People get allergic to many things, but basically there are uh, allergy reactions that last all year long, and then there are seasonal allergies. And seasonal allergies affect you maybe in the spring or sometimes in the fall, sometimes in the winter, sometimes, you know, the beginning of each year, January, February, people get miserable with allergy. Then there's the perennial. People are allergic all the time. And so often, 30 years ago, I thought, boy, those people with perennial allergies must grow flowers all times, because that was my mindset way back then, is everything must be caused by inhaling a pollen of some kind when I was trained in allergy work so many years ago. Well, Dr. Cass Ingram joins us today, and I was talking to him before we went on the air, and I always enjoy talking with him on and off the air. But off the air, I said, when you were practicing medicine in your clinic out in Illinois, and you saw an allergic patient, and I was thinking he'd say, well, chlorotrimton works better than hisminol, the allergy drugs to stop sneezing and wheezing. No, he's saying, I was into nutrition the whole time. My patients loved me. The doctors were questioning yeah. me full time. Well, why would you give something that dried up the nasal membranes when the body's trying to flush it out? Why would you give cortisone or, or inhalers when, when bacteria and fungi are infecting the mucous membranes. Immediately, I'm using bromelain, papane, citrus bioflavonoids. That's what I had available. And I investigated allergy, food yeah. intolerance. Yeah. Helped a lot of people by removing the, the toxic foods. Yeah, those, but, those are the things we're going to talk about today because food allergy is so controversial. I was in that field 35 years ago. As a matter of fact, you remember the old black test, the cytotoxic test? Yeah, Dr. Black were you test? doing that? Yeah, you were I was, a pioneer then. I was the pioneer. Yeah. I studied with the people at the Washington University School of Medicine that actually discovered it. We then discovered that that old neutrophil degranulation test, it was called, actually was detecting kind of IgG type of antibodies, so delayed onset allergies to foods. And so I want to talk to Dr. Ingram about food allergy versus food sensitivity. And I want to talk about respiratory allergy. How many of us have it? And then, of course, I want to go where he goes so well, he and Chris Chase on this show, and that is what happens if we inhale mold? What happens if we live around penicillium or stachybotrys or alternary or any of these molds? The symptoms, friends, are much worse than sneezing and blowing your nose. Oh, but the doctors say, well, breathing these molds can cause a little respiratory problem. Boy, I want to talk to my friend, Dr. Cass Ingram, about that today because there are remedies that you can use. We'll be right back. Have you seen the ads on TV for cholesterol medicine? Some of them talk about how we get cholesterol through genetics and diet. Now this isn't a criticism, but did you know these are not the only sources of cholesterol? Did you further know that the very diets usually prescribed to lower cholesterol might actually raise it? Cholesterol may be one of the most controversial topics in healthcare today. There are some who say that cholesterol counts shouldn't concern you at all. It is true that cholesterol is essential for our body's good health. On the other side of the argument are those who tell you that having very low cholesterol is important. Recently, the national guidelines for what's considered normal changed again. What used to be perfectly normal is now considered way too high. Doctors are told by pharmaceutical companies to prescribe statin drugs more and more, and now they're among the most prescribed medications on the market. The information can be so confusing. Maybe it's time to slow down and rethink the cholesterol debate. First. Understand that cholesterol is essential for our bodies. Second, the drugs prescribed to lower cholesterol can actually deplete the body of CoQ10, a nutrient that's absolutely essential for heart health. Isn't heart health why we're taking the drug to begin with? One other thing to remember, low fat, high carbohydrate diets are often recommended for lowering cholesterol. And yet studies show that carbs actually raise cholesterol more than dietary fats. With all these things to consider, what might be a solid approach to dealing with cholesterol? I would begin with a phase one diet, a diet that's been successfully used to help with cholesterol. 
I would recognize that fungus itself can actually make cholesterol. The phase one diet, along with antifungal supplements, can actually help keep this at bay. Next, I would take a cholesterol-specific supplement regimen, one that has such things as niacin, gamma orizonol, artichoke, and of course, red yeast rice. A solid round of antifungal and anti-inflammatory spices could really be a good idea as well. These are safe, effective, and inexpensive. Would you like to know more about a good all-in-one cholesterol supplement like this? Call my office or visit bioactivenutrients.com. I'm Guy Evans, and now you know. For a written transcript of today's Did You Know, or to find out more about Guy Evans' bioactive nutrients, visit www.bioactivenutrients.com or call 1-800-879-6504. As I read the statistics, estimated that uh, 50 million or more Americans suffer from respiratory allergy, 12 million or more from food allergy. It costs the U.S. $7.9 billion a year. Those of you in the audience with breathing problems, asthma, allergy, etc., really need to watch this show because it's one thing to educate them. It's a whole other thing to really give you help. Yeah. And thank you for coming sure. on the show and helping. It's, if, you, if you get the food intolerance test, it's all in here, the address, the phone number, and the, the, the type of test it is, the one that you originated that's mm -hmm. now still being done, well done in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, they have Im increased the technology. Two chapters, what your allergies mean and what are your allergies, are in here. So follow that protocol, and you'll have to have your doctor order the test. This guy's good, though, Raj Nandin. Raj, Raj Nandin, yeah. he's got two PhDs. Yep. He's the main guy left in the States, and so he operates out of Chicago area. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they read those two chapters, then they'll see the case histories, like Mrs. Z. This is a little off subject, but it's important. Mrs. Z had migraines for 30 years and eliminated when we found out she was deathly allergic to wheat, baker's yeast, and rye. Well, actually, that tells you mycotoxin, doesn't it? Yeast, the yeah. yeast part, yeah. sacramentals. Now, uh, uh, Mr. G was allergic to NutraSweet and also to baker's yeast and butter, and he had sinusitis. But again, butter, cows grazing on mycotoxin-infected hay. Uh, obviously, the aspartame is uh, uh, poisonous and genetically engineered on top of that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, yeast being a fungal irritant. Back when we used to do uh, food allergy testing, we found the majority of people allergic to either baker's or brewer's yeast. Yeah. Little did I know at that time that probably meant they're up to here with mold. Right, right. right. And even you'll have cases of people who worked in a bakery or who worked a lot with the baker's yeast. Baker's lung. And mm -hmm. Yes, and we had a guy who had terrible stiff joints who'd worked in a bakery for 30 years, and he was red and puffy and, and uh, blanched all over. And, of course, he had to go on antifungal treatment. Well, that's exactly my point. When, w years ago, when I got into this field, I became certified by ASAT, American Society of Allergy Technologists, mm -hmm. or something Early like that, on. way, way back, 35, 40 years ago. And I used to do skin tests on people. And I learned that it's what they're breathing that causes all their misery. Yep. Yep. Well, that's just a secondary load if their gut, if yes, their right. immune system that's right. is overloaded. Well, for example, I was allergic to a lot of these things, and I couldn't eat any kind of grains and, I, mm -hmm. and a lot of the ferments. Mm -hmm. I started taking the wild oregano, the oregamax, the crude herb, and the oil, and I was able to eat a wider range of foods. So you're right. We have the inhalant challenge, but if the, the gut is the milieu that is so serious, I mean, you're talking about... There are more germs in, in the colon than there are cells in the whole body. So you have fungi, you have penicillium, you have cladosporidium, you have aspergillus, you have uh, every kind of candida, mm -hmm. and you're getting mycotoxin production in the bowel. Yeah. So you have to treat the gut. Now that could be acidophilus products, certainly oregamax is very good, oregabiotic, those are the two best oregano's for the gut. We've talked about oregano before, everybody mm -hmm. think knows that oil of oregano is antifungal. Mm -hmm. but also, we have to deal with the head and chest up. The fact that you could have allergy here and you think it's pollen. That's a whole other thing. It is, because yeah. what did the Mayo Clinic find in 1999 about chronic sinusitis, right? Mayo's, Mayo's uh, couldn't help the people. They couldn't get well on antibiotics or uh, inhalers. They couldn't get well on nasal sprays or surgery. So they said, we don't know what's going on. That's, that was a default study. So they washed the sinuses out. Uh, and, cl and cultured and found in 98% of the people up to eight different molds. Mm -hmm. Average two or three molds, but they said they were invasive. Penicillium, the 
green bread mold was in people's sinuses. Yep. Certainly stachybotrys, but aspergillus, mm -hmm. clodosporidium. There were 43 fungi. Candida was not so common in this area because of the vascular system. But the problem 43. is, Dr. Ingram, they've been uh, giving those patients, those same patients, antibiotics for their chronic sinus yeah. problem. They're talking like this. They're miserable. Yeah. And what do the antibiotics do but assure its chronicity? Right. Assure that it's going to be and, a chronic and problem. And, of course, the nasal sprays are damaging the lining of the membrane. Right. So instead, you know, you get the food allergy thing under control, but you start treating with antifungals. Mm -hmm. You use the oil of oregano, the P73 material is, is absolutely edible, absolutely safe, absolutely perfect, absolutely mountain material. Mm -hmm. You take that, you could take it two or three times a day. You take capsules. Oregoresp is the best. The, the reports, if you go on the internet and type in Oregoresp, used to be known as Oregacin, the reports are strong eliminating sinusitis, which is tough, 30, 40 year cases. Mm -hmm. So those two, you might do a spray. I love the spray. Yeah, you take and pump that into the house or the office building, you don't care what anybody says, or the <laughs> back of the airline seat or the chest, <laughs> you know, when you're sitting there and you, and it, <coughs> kill those molds. This actually, at Celsus Labs, destroyed fungi in the air, you know. Studies are there. See, there's so many, and, and folks, listen, this show will never, Dr. Ingram and I talked about, it will never tell you not to go to an allergist. It will tell you, look, we do see anaphylactic reactions sometimes with these little injections. So be careful of that. Then you're it's not one thing. The cause, no, yeah. you're treating superficial. It's one thing to take an allergy shot and then live on antihistamines. It's a whole other thing to what did we name this show? To know the cause. Yeah, and, to there's, understand. and there's fungus in here, too. <laughs> You know, there's no fungus. I in can here. tell when my neck gets a little stiff. <laughs> Not anymore. Can, I can see you. Do you do that when you get on an airplane to come out here? Did you do that? Yeah, but sometimes they think I'm trying to contaminate, you know, or, <laughs> or you know, sort of deflect <laughs> from other odors. One time you're they were harassed. Most of the time they put up with it. Yeah. Or you just spray them. You're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you're you know? doing such a good job for the people around you. This stuff. Yeah, right. Kills germs, and we talk a lot on this show about fungal germs. And then don't forget if it's in here that remember that case of the nasal polyps where you spray it in? Oh, he's That's got that this sign brand new. Yeah. He's got this brand new product. Yeah. Those of you in Oklahoma know about oh, it already. Uh, uh, Michigan, you guys know about it when I was out there talking about it. But um, this is a little tiny. Evan will make a show, a little pop-up for you to understand what this stuff is. But that is powerful. Now, I will tell you, the people who use that emailed me and said, wow, does that sting initially? Good. Yeah, initially. That's yeah. good. That's it takes good. a while for the erection. See, there's no uh, sodium hydroxide. There's no buffering agents because those are chemicals. Yep. So the company said, no, we'll just do the bay leaf, the sage, the uh, oregano, and the clove in a saline base. Okay. And, and so if you can just handle that, it's doing good work because it, it drips into the frontal maxillary sphenoid sinuses. Yeah. When we get back from this break, or maybe before we go to this break, I want to talk to you a little bit about the quality control, you know, where you have this made, the QC, the syrups that extraction. we did the other day, the extraction processes, yeah. the quality control. Non-GMO, non-GMO, no genetic engineering. No genetically modified organisms yeah. in this. And then you just heard Dr. Ingram say, you know, we won't use chemicals in this. When he says a saline solution, that's salt water, isotonic, that's salt water, so it doesn't irritate the membranes. With the oregano in it, it gives you a kick, but I'm telling that's you, you need want. a kick. You, you need get, the you kick in kick. there. The fungus has been in there for, who knows, 30 years, 40 years? If, in fact, Mayo Clinic is correct, if, in fact, all, virtually all, chronic sinusitis is due to fungus, then just go with me on this. What are all tummy aches due to? Mm -hmm. What are all headaches due to? What are all the skin pneumonia, conditions due to? Bronchitis. What are mental aberrations due to? If they're just discovering here, wait till they have the whole body to begin discovering. Hi, I'm Frank Jordan with a question from Francis. Frank, do you have any free stuff we can get from NSC? Well, Francis NSC is your place for free stuff that you can benefit with your health. First, ask for the free sample of the NSC ammunition glucan. Yours by calling the number on your screen. Then get free sample shipping, too. One more? Just for the asking, get free ammunition reports on more than 20 health topics, ranging from cancer to heart to diabetes to colds and flu. 
Then you can join the NSC Club free and get 24% off any NSC ammunition product plus the free club shipping. For health information and more NSC specials, join the 60,000 who now receive the ammunition news. That's right, free. If you want your free stuff from NSC, just call us or go to the web. Help your body help you with NSC ammunition products. This changes everything. Dr. Cass Ingram joins me today. I'm so glad he is here. I have a personal friend who has been on allergy shots. Are you sitting down? For 33 years. And the standard pitch by the allergist is maybe next year. Yeah. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. And you can't fault the allergist. you got to fault the person who would say, well, maybe next year. Do, you know? he, does he think the, the doctor's God or something? I mean, he is believing th this individual God believes. God wouldn't, wouldn't do that. No, this individual believes in doctors. He Anything a doctor says, yeah, is, yeah, that. is gospel. So. You know what? There was a study done where people who believed in something higher lived longer than people who just live in a shell of secularism. Yep. I'm convinced that part of our healing is to have peace in our hearts. And, you know, we can't help everybody, but we'll still uh, preach that message. We'll still share it. People, share your love, yep. even to those who oppose you. Share it, because your job is only to be the messenger, to deliver that message. But let's keep delivering it. I've never heard you say anything bad in the years, couple of years I've known you about your peers who really ostracized you and said, wait a minute, this guy's giving... Uh, uh, vitamins to patients who are really sick. This guy's giving herbs to patients who are really sick. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to write a prescription. Why don't you do that? Yet well, I, I, I like, uh, you know, advanced forms of medicine. I just don't, I, I, why should I even be concerned about if, if somebody's in the dark ages or if there's something backward that somebody's doing that, you know, derives from the 10th century? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, let them continue to do what they do. I don't agree with it. I'm interested in things that are proven by the letter of the science. You know, I'm not interested in aspirin for colon cancer. I knew that Bayer was pitching that, and now it's been completely debunked mm -hmm. as useless. So, uh, you know, people do what they do. I will continue to find things that have been used for thousands. You know what's proof for me? That little lady in the village. Yep. And the people before her. 50,000 years of human use. I know some people say the Earth's so... I mean, whatever. 5,000, if that makes you feel better. The point is, for thousands of years they have been doing this. Now, we take it and prove it in modern medicine. We show that pomegranate works. We show that carob is a natural uh, balancer to the gut. You show that grape flavonoids work better than aspirin. Foltz work at mm -hmm. Madison, University of Madison, Wisconsin. Or we get into fungal uh, components to allergy. I've been treating it as a fungus. Mayo comes out later and says the same. Mayo just published in 2005 Lynn's work showing that, that if you have cough, a How many years have I been saying <laughs> chronic cough is fungal, deep cough is fungal, deep cough is serious fungal, irritating dry cough is fungal, cough, cough, cough in April, May, June, July, August, September, November, I can say that in other languages <laughs> too, uh, is fungal. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Mayo just said, okay, we did, we did 100 chest x-rays, in other words, they did a CAT scan equal to 100 chest x-rays, and we found, guess what we found? We found they're like little kids sometimes, so why should I pay attention? We found a fungus in the sinuses. And guess what? It's causing the cough. You know? So, the, yeah, I mean, it, oh, the, so your oregano has been working for years beyond Mayo's discovery. Folks, that's part of this show. Do you want to wait for science to discover it? Or would you like to get proactive with your health right now? Change. That's what I tell you. Kill the about fungus. Here. Kill the fungus, exercise, eat a if, different if, diet. If you have allergy, like what happened to me. I don't have hay fever or bronchitis ever did again. You, did you have that? Yeah, I had those. Horrible hay fever from Iowa. Uh, we thought it was the pollen, right? And now you have genetically engineered pollen, which poisoned that whole village in Mindanao, Philippines, where the whole village got sick from that Monsanto pollen. Horrible mm. poison. So there's worse problems now than ever. And we know that Fusarium fungus loves the genetically engineered corn. And we know that this is the worst year ever for uh, sinusitis, bronchitis, and you can thank the genetically engineered corn and soy for that. However, if you destroy the fungal infection in the gut and the sinus and bronchial cavities, 
mm. then you don't have symptoms. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You and I have known that for decades. They're starting to learn that now. And folks, the show, the basis of the show is know the cause means understand the reason for your misery. Not that this is diagnosed as fibromyalgia and it one day may be arthritis. Understand why it happened. Did you move into a moldy home? Yeah. Did you begin drinking alcohol, which is a mycotoxin brewer's yeast? Have you, you taken lots of antibiotics, you, right? Yeah, I mean, lots of antibiotics is big. Yeah. A lot of cortisone. Are you a sugar holic? Were you a sugar holic when you were a kid? Birth Do you crave carbos? Hey, you drink a lot of fruit juice. Do you eat a lot of bars from the health food store with all that rice syrup and different yeah. you know, sweeteners? Maybe, just maybe, you're you, eating mycotoxins. Well, you eat mycotoxins. That's a very good point. If you're eating a lot of grains, you eat mycotoxins. But you know what? A thousand years ago, nobody ate carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. They didn't exist. Okay, there was the crude grains and that was it. You know, coarse barley bread or oaten meal or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are 90% more carbs than our body can even handle. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about that case in England? There was a woman, she had allergies and she had bloating and, so, and she had other problems. She had abdominal swelling. They cut her open. They found a 50-pound fungus in her gut. 50-pound fungus. Wow. And another case in England, the guy can't drive. He's weaving around. Mm. Can't, Toxic. He's, I know where you're going that's with that this. Auto, and they've pulled him over. He's never taken any alcohol. Yep. He had auto brewery syndrome. Not too rare anymore. In no. Japan, there were a couple of reports of this guy couldn't keep his job because he smelled like alcohol and he started weaving and bobbing and so forth. Once you start this fungal growth in your body, which is why these products are so good, it doesn't just go away, right? Uh, people tend to think, well, well, I'll stop the antibiotic then, Doug. The damage is done. Boy, they're really growing it with those antibiotics and the cortisone. 50-pound fungus in one human. And I'll bet you take her history. And she's got lots and lots of antibiotics, Antibiotic birth therapy. control pills, et yeah. cetera, things so, of that sort. So, you know, when you talk about allergy, we also talk about fungal infestation colonizing the mucous membranes. So the, the first thing to do is to destroy that fungus. You can use a Regamax, a Regabiotic, oil of oregano. If we have a food intolerance, if we're eating a lot of grains, let's find out what our food, aller food allergies mm -hmm. are, but maybe just eliminating soy, corn, rye, wheat, bakers and brewers yeast. Mm -hmm. Just those, I think Stewart called them the sinister seven. Mm -hmm. You know, he took the top seven and mm -hmm. said stay away from these. It's all semantics when it comes to dealing with allergies because so many allergies would dissipate if you would start eradicating a mold that shouldn't be in your body. It's called a mildew in Leviticus. Shouldn't be there, so start eradicating it. And then change, don't feed it. These little buggers are parasites. These little fungi become parasites of man. And isn't they better it, have their carbs. Isn't it, and I, of course, I'm not a scripture expert, but isn't it interesting that the Old Testament, and of course, in, in the word ease off, hmm. actually also uses the verb to purge. Hmm. Now, in God's view, perhaps then, purging germs is the purge of choice. Interesting. That you'll gain your health by purging both the mycotoxins and the fungi and the bacteria, all of these things. Here's another interesting one, Dr. Ingram. The word yeast uh, is a disparaging word in the Bible. It's used, I think, 80 times or so. Really? Yes, and uh, don't be like a yeast of the Pharisees and eat unleavened bread, no yeast in bread. It's always negatively mm. connotated, which is very, very interesting. Mm. You know, th this, this whole thing, well, folks, then why this are we isn't, drinking booze as part of a ceremony? It isn't our invention. Yeah. I mean, we're just two guys sitting here trying to teach people that they don't have to be sick. Yeah. They don't have they to be don't sick. They don't have to be. And so many drugs that the doctors are loading you up on really hurt your immune system, and these are opportunistic organisms. So when the immunity is down, they go to work. We're going to be right back with more fun from Dr. Katz. I'm Guy Evans with great news about your battle with high cholesterol. Take control with Cholesterol Control, an all-natural supplement formulated to assist in reducing bad cholesterol, boosting good cholesterol, and stabilizing triglycerides. Yes, it does have side effects like feeling better, losing weight, and having more energy. I think you can live with those. Exercise, a healthy diet, and cholesterol control. Take control. Cholesterol control. Get real. Get bioactive. I'm Eva Ein. When it comes to skincare, we all want to look our best. 
But these days, with so many products and choices, deciding what to use can be overwhelming. That's why I created Eva Ein Skin Care, a complete regimen in four products. Fewer products, more affordable. The highest quality, natural-based ingredients with no harmful chemicals, no animal testing, and they're paraben-free. Simple, straightforward, and effective. Because life is complicated enough. I'm Mark Sisson, and I developed the Damage Control Master Formula, the most comprehensive, all-in-one, convenient, vitamin, mineral, antioxidant, phytonutrient formula ever created. Full-spectrum vitamin E, CoQ10, alpha-lipoic acid, phosphatidylserine, green tea, grapeseed extract, beta-glucan, lycopene, and 40 other exceptional nutrients. If you are really serious about vitamins and want the maximum power of high-potency supplementation, this is exactly what you've been looking for. You know, I asked Bill and uh, Scott to lay out the products here. You see them right there that I would take today if I had allergic rhinitis, allergic sinusitis, food allergies, etc. And the price came to, now remember in 1972 I became certified for allergy testing. Um, the price came to about seven allergy shots, yeah. just the allergy shots. They'd come in every week and get an allergy shot. And so it is, and we used to charge six times that yeah. much for an allergy workup. Yeah. So it's inexpensive to try and address sure. the root cause. Well, you could go get jabbed or get well. It's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> On top of this, we talked a little bit about food allergy. Right. There are immediate type reactions. People eat peanut, their tongue swells, they die. Right. Anaphylaxis, right. type Neutralize one. that with the oregano. Thank you. Yeah. IgE mediated reactions. Yeah. There's also these IgG, these delayed right. onset reactions. Talk a little bit about those because people eat and it doesn't have an immediate reaction right. on them. Well, you've got the mast release, and we, everybody knows about it, the sudden anaphylactic shock. But right. who in the world gets a headache immediately after eating something with MSG or immediately after eating a piece of rye toast? Right. Uh, or uh, who gets a uh, colitis attack just as soon as they eat a pat of butter or a piece of wheat bread? You know, you are having delayed inflammatory toxicity to food that could be, you could have a cluster headache that accumulates five weeks after having three chocolate bars. Yeah. Five weeks later, you get the cluster headache. The body tries to compensate, it fails, you get inflammation, you get a headache. This is an inflammatory reaction when the food is poisonous to the gut, mediated by the vagus nerve to the scalp. So, and also, if the gut is filled with fungal forms, then the carbohydrates or the grains or the yeast or the mycotoxins feed that, and you get poisoned. So for the chronic uh, allergy, let's clean out the microbes. Let's purge. And that's the wild oregano approach, which I have found to be universally a simple thing. You can take some lactobacillus on the side with this. So we, did, we take some acid off. Let's see, I like the health back the best. It works best with the oregano. But we're taking the wild oregano, and we're doing this, this team. We're going to decontaminate the pollens, the toxic molds. We're going to decontaminate with a spray. We could do that, mm -hmm. all right? So we're covered. If we want the nasal spray, we can call and say we want that, too. We can look in the health store. Like, for example, that wonderful people in Oklahoma. Oh, they're so they're good wonderful. to us. What are they down? Oh, that whole group. What's the name of that wonderful lady? Uh, Carol. Carol. Carol Kepper. If you're in that yeah. area. Finally, people, get the food allergies, as in the book. Get yeah. into that. Thank yeah. you so much you're for welcome. joining us today. Yeah. Folks, God bless you. I trust you're learning a lot with Dr. Andrew. We'll see you next time. There are songs that inspire us. And there's holes in the floor.